top five mistakes business owners make. We all make them. We have lived with them. Mistake number two. Bad. It's Wednesday, WTF Wednesday. That's not to say there were not glitches and there are still glitches happening. Welcome to WTF Wednesday, where every week we talk about stupid <laughs> that we've encountered that you should try to avoid. Bad hiring practices. Yeah. This is a conundrum. How many times have we hear this? We've story? all faced. Uh, there was a time where there were nine hires in one year that I had went through. People hire out of desperation because they haven't planned for the growth. And it sneaks up on them. All of a sudden, yes. they find themselves in need of an administrative assistant, a warehouse manager, a marketing person, someone that has to come on staff. They're not ready for it and out of desperation because I've got to get this position filled by next Tuesday because this project is due or this sale is coming up hiring the wrong people. There's protocols in advance so that you can do it calmly because you're supposed to hire slowly, fire quickly, or there's some saying it sounds better than that, having gone through this. Even if you hire someone who knows how to do uh, assessments, because that is a tool and a resource that you can implement as part of the protocol, you have to know how to evaluate those assessments. So when you invest in those tools, make sure there's some kind of follow-up that you can have available to you so you're not just reading these are you doing interpreting them linda owned an insurance agency she hired she fired i've been a manager for decades and decades in different experiences in retail trade and then in the financing business the phrase hire slowly fire quickly as a manager sometimes i would come in and inherit bad employees i'm scottish i'm blunt i don't mind telling you out the door you gotta take the emotion out of it really because it's about your business. Yes. And if you have an HR consultant in your back pocket, talk to them before your process of hiring so you know what not to say when you are firing somebody. There's no reason for you to get into, like, are you okay? Because I've seen that happen. Like, just get their things and walk them out the door. Out the door. You know, it's good to have some basic hiring standards. What I like to do, something that we call the Trevor Method, is create tasks for people to perform that demonstrates how serious they are and if they understand your value. So if you have a prospective employee, give them a basic task. Okay, June, send me a text message right now after we hang up with your full name and your email address, mm -hmm. and I'll get the employment application out to you, and then literally time it to see how long June takes to send the text message. It is really the actions speak louder than words because when you're on an interview with someone, when they're on an interview with you, they're on their best behavior and they're giving you their best references. They're, everybody's in love, it's a honeymoon fest. So everything sounds great, but it's the, then becomes the ethic. Showing up on time for the interview. I worked with a, uh, a business trainer many years ago 10 a.m. the conference for training started. If you weren't there at 10 a.m., the door got locked. You were not allowed in. Sounded terrible, but guess what happened after a few weeks? The word got around the company. Everybody showed up on time. If you have a new employee coming in, a prospective employee coming in for an interview, and she's late, door's closed, door's locked. Have a nice day. We're done. When you had the insurance agency, I remember that you went on a project to create an employee handbook. Sometimes there is a rogue employee who means well, but they have their way and it may not always match up and they have a lot of questions and they have a lot of needs and wants and etc. You have to know the boundaries of what they're entitled to and what you're entitled to as an employer and what to expect from the employee. It's become very convoluted with HR and you know the employee you have to protect the employee and you have to be protected too so put it in writing got to put it in writing you have a and, handbook and, it's in writing and have Standards. someone who knows the legalities of HR in and out do not draft this thing by yourself oh heck no no it's there's it's too complicated is is there travel around i mean no one's traveling really but are there travel provisions and what are like do they buy food when they're not attending the meeting like is that paid for? like you have to have every little contingency i was a director of business development for a new mortgage company and i created the handbook out of scratch 
out of my head. Only because at that point I'd had 25 years experience. That's fine. And I knew what we expected of our salespeople. If you can do it, but then have it reviewed we and ran, get it signed. I prepared it, but we ran it by our yes. attorney. Because yes. you want to make sure there are legal provisions that you are not overstepping boundaries or that you're covering all of your legal bases. Yes, exactly. Our final point about bad hiring practices mm -hmm. is create a training culture. Mm, what do you mean by that, Trev? You know, how many times have you had a job, you know, some low-level retail job, and you get in the door and the other employees walk around ignoring you for the first two hours or two months. Your culture should be that either you have to find someone within the organization who is the training manager, or all employees are taught as they come in and come up through the, the channels, they are expected to embrace that culture and teach other people who are new hires. It's a rising tides mentality. It's also called leadership, right? And delegation. <laughs> oh, and guess what? Less work for you to do. If you as the employer is stressing how important it is for the company to grow and grow efficiently and grow productively and profitably, you have to have these training methodologies in place and and embrace it so that everyone is wanting to be a part of that team. I had a great time. If there's anything that you found useful or not useful and just need to vent about it because you got nothing out of this, you can reach us at curious at auroraconsulting.biz. I'm Trevor. I'm Linda Ray. And we are Aurora, Aurora Consulting. Consulting. Financing, Financing solutions, solutions for your business success story. story.